yeah. All right, everybody, come on, let's go. We're going to get this party started. We have people on Zoom. We're excited. All right. All right, so I have a quick, hopefully short story to tell you. Um, I've been in business 18 years, and everybody here, I think I brought on at some point, but when I started, I was very successful. And then like most people, I have problems. I had issues um, and I went through a very bad spot in my business. And I did not know Richard, but I knew somebody that did know Richard and I was looking for help. And I'm like, what do I do? Like I was in this weird place because I'd already done business. I knew what I was doing. But I was just in this weird place that I felt like somebody needed to kind of tell me what to do and try to help me out. So I don't know. I figured I would call over a $100 million producer because I thought they would talk to me and like have him give me advice. And so I threw like in my mind was a Hail Mary. And I was like, you know, could, could you get could you get Richard to, to talk to me? And he was like, yeah, Richard will talk to you. And I'm like, what? Richard will talk to me. So I call Richard and I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going through this really bad thing. I don't think you remember any of this. I, feel like, no, no, no. No. I was like, I was like, man, listen, I'm like, things are bad. Like I, I I'm I'm you know, I'm a single dad, three kids, like da 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 da. And so he goes, So how long have you been in the business? He goes, okay, so you know what you're doing? He's like, yes, he, so you're gonna learn his his demeanor is very like straightforward, black and white. It's 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 very refreshing for me. And he said, So you know what to do. And there is no magic pill. Oh, wait, no, there is a magic pill. You sit in your ass and you pick up, you sit your ass in the chair and you pick up the phone. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and he was like, listen, and we had, a, we had a real conversation. And then he was like, listen, if you ever need anything, you know, just, you know, you can always call me and talk to me. And like at, at that, it was just like this real conversation with the real person. When you see somebody that does like this amount of business, it, it, it's almost esoteric and not real. And He's a very real guy. And you've been number one in Los Angeles for how long? 14 years. Now. 14 years. Over $100 million in production. What's the highest production you've ever had? Uh, this year, we're currently pending close to 88. 288 million. Yeah. So I, I undersold the shit out of him. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, I, I've met like major, major producers, like, like 500, 600 million dollar producers. And, and honestly, um, I, I, I want this guy talking to my people before anybody else. And this guy is, is amazing. I love him. Um, he's been around forever. He's been a part of this office. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to come here. So still with, part of this office. Still are, still are part of this office. Um, that's a different conversation. <laughs> but yeah, he, he is a part of this office. And um, without further ado, I want you to ask questions. He's going to talk to you about production and how to get into more production. There's 74 days left in the year, and I want to get you guys just to crush it. And so don't feel free to ask, feel free to ask questions. And he's here, $280 million. Richard Schulman, everybody, come on. Come on. <laughs> There's like two takeaways from that story. And the tracker on you. Is it Bali? It does. What? Come on, come on. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I am a, I'm a Cub Scout. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Just That's wild. I know. Super high tech here. I don't know that I would ever need that, but I want. <laughs> All right. I uh, I have two takeaways from Frank's story. Number one, don't call me. I think it's number one. <laughs> Um, number two, back in this office when we used to be two buildings down, I had an agent, as I recognize a few, but then uh, I had an agent on my team. We would do prospecting. So right, right after this, I'm going to prospect with my team. And um, we, uh, we had a prospecting afternoon or something. And one of the agents would just wander around and, you know, talk to all the other agents and get coffee 16 times. And so I literally taped him to his chair like a prospect. And you're probably like, oh, that helped him sell real estate, right? No, he does not sell real estate anymore. So it didn't work. But imagine taping yourself to your chair and just prospecting. So um, uh, I have a little bit to talk about. Uh, I can answer a lot of questions or have a discussion with you guys, or I can just yell at you for a little bit. What I usually like to do, and Frank referenced in 2018, I was on stage at Mega Camp. You can play that video. It's really actually 
that was a very good presentation by me and Mark and Anna, the other two panelists up there. And we talk about this. So who's been to Baggy Camp? Anyone? Just Frank, who's been to Family Reunion? So a big, a big inflection point in my business. I joined this office in 2007. I had done at that point, the year before, I had done like four and a half million in volume. I was still rookie of the year for Prudential and Cito, not Berkshire Hathaway. Um, but I joined this office having done four and a half million on like nine deals. And then the next year I did 27 deals and like, I don't know, nine or 10 million. But a big inflection point for me was going to family reunion. It happened to be in Anaheim. The prior team leader, uh, Rob Eigner, happened to have an extra ticket and he made me go and I went. It was a big moment. I've been to everyone since then, except for the two that we missed in, from COVID. Uh, I wouldn't really feel like going to Orlando. It's a, lot of, a long flight to go to Orlando. Either way, so I go to Mega Camp. I'm on stage. There's three people up there. Gary's interviewing us. And we had pre-cleared this because we had to check that the cell towers could actually handle it. That was like the objection. It was like, we don't know if the cell tower will handle this. We wanted all 8,000. I said, Gary, we can have 8,000 people in this room, all text five people. That's 40,000 attempted contacts that your company can make in one minute. And he said, great, ask me if the cell towers can handle it. So then we had to get that cleared. We got that cleared like the day before that they could do it. So we did that. So that's what I'm asking you guys to do because there's nothing that you need to learn about real estate, right? The only thing that you need to learn is that you just need to prospect more, right? So if everyone can take out their phones, I can see all of you. So I can see, I love doing this. And I can see people just don't do it. It's like you bother to show up and you just don't do it. So I just want everyone to just text five people and just ask them to meet for coffee. So there's what, five, eight, 11, 14 people here, plus Frank's not doing it. So we've got about 25 people, 30 people all told between the, the two rooms. Can they hear me okay? Yeah. Great. So everyone's gonna just text five people and ask them to go for coffee. Just say, hey, hey, you wanna be for coffee? Hey, Frank, you wanna get coffee tomorrow? Yes. Done. <laughs> when we did this with Gary, Gary said, great, some joker just texted me and asked me for coffee. He said, no one else texted me. Gary got his phone out and started texting people also. However, I could see when you're on that big stage that they have you all lit, I could only see the front row of people, which is why you don't get scared when you do it because you can't really see anything. And I can only see the front row of people and none of them were doing anything. That's like where all the VIP, all the reserved seating, not a single person took their phone out. So Brad, Brad didn't even take his phone out. Definitely, I don't know if he was there, but definitely not. I think they're on a call. I think they're on a Zoom call right now. I think they've been connected with Gary this morning. Anywho, look, let's say there's 25 people here on the, between the, this room and this room, right? That fair? We're going to do, who knows what five times 25 is? I always, I always sub realtors. If you start with basic math, wow, that's good. So I always tell people like, I don't care how bad your math is, you need to be able to multiply by two and a half, most important thing. Um, 125 attempted contacts right now. Our average conversion over an hour is about, call it two and a half, that's 62 and a half appointments set right now. Is there a transaction hiding in there? Yeah. yeah? I love your enthusiasm and confidence. <laughs> I did this in Portland one time with uh, Craig Rieger, if you guys know him. And this literally came about like at a bar at two in the morning. It was like, what are we going to do tomorrow for a full day class? We did 1,200 contacts uh, between the group, about 90 people. And like, you know, non sales people were setting appointments. A non sales person got like a $1.8 million sale in Portland, which is a really big deal out of this. Okay. So here's my question. We're going to set 62 appointments right now, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there an, an extra transaction in there? If I if if this group sets 62 appointments, is someone going to make a transaction between here and here? Yes. Yeah, we feel that's a safe bet. Yeah. Okay. So what's stopping you guys from just doing this every day until you set 62 appointments and make a transaction? I don't know that the numbers. Honestly, I don't know if it's 22 or 42 or 62 or 82, but I think we all feel comfortable saying 62 appointments is going to get you to a transaction, right? Seems safe, Frank. You've sold a couple houses. Yes. If I said, Frank, here's 62 appointments, like there's got to be a sale in there somewhere. Absolutely. Unless otherwise you're just terrible at real estate, which is also entirely possible. Okay. So what's going to stop you guys from doing this every day, setting 
appointments, going on multiple appointments a day until you hit a sale. Anything? So. Yes, that, that is the correct answer. So what I find in real estate is that, you know, I do these types of things, classes. I do the same thing for my team. My team has the same problem, right? We've done 288 million pending and close year to date. You know the funny thing about that, Frank? Um, you know what happens January 1st? It all resets. Just back to zero. Just everyone's, everyone's in first place again. Can I tell you something that I did yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Um, so my job is very similar to selling houses as a team leader because I basically, when I recruit an agent, that's like you guys selling a house. It's, it's very similar to the same thing. And when I came in on Monday, I realized, holy crap, I only have four people for the month and I should be getting like 10 or more. And so like I freaked out a little bit. So what I did is I pulled up every contact that I had made within the last six months and I started texting people. Because I think I found out that texting people will respond to a text message more than they will just a phone call these days. It's like super weird. But I started texting people. Yesterday, just alone, I did I, I did not feel like I was comfortable leaving the office until I made um, three appointments. I made five. Mm -hmm. Two coming in today, two tomorrow, and then two on the on the next day. And so the texting 100 percent works. Yeah. No, I, I do want to do a disclaimer. Texting is a much higher efficiency way of connecting with people, but when you actually need to have a conversation and build that relationship, you do need to look to do that over the phone or in person. So I don't want you to substitute texting for human contact, right? Because if we do that, we're not going to build those relationships. Do you guys know why people hire agents? Yeah. yeah. So the they, Gary calls it like and trust, right? They hire people they like and trust. Um, I just had a situation last night where um, a friend of a friend called me. They're having trouble with the listing. It's not selling. I said, well, you know, I, I didn't recognize the agent name. How did you end up hiring this agent? Just out of curiosity, right? Everything's just curiosity, right? I see you have a $2 million home. I see that you've listed with a broker I've never heard of. Gee, that seems odd. I feel like you should probably hire a broker that I've heard of before if you're going to sell a $2 million home in a neighborhood I work in. It's my wife's best friend. Uh, so what's the takeaway there? Why do you well, they already hired this person. So I, I, I'm getting a call 30 days in, they're panicking about it not being sold. Now- They're mixing business with personal. Yeah, yeah, but, but listen, listen. That's how, that's how you guys beat me, right? I'm a better agent than you. I have a better track record than you. I can go sit down and say, here, I've sold 2,000 homes in this house and that house. And I still lose half my, my team will still lose half their listing appointments. Why do they lose half their listing appointments? We lose to the wife's best friend, right? That's everyone's opportunity is to have those relationships to be the wife's best friend and get the business. Now, their house isn't selling. They're losing their replacement home that appraised for $500,000 more than they were in escrow for. So we agree that's pretty amazing, yes? Has anyone ever seen that before? I've never seen that before. Um, they're losing their dream home and a half million dollars. I mean, let's, let's not call it instant equity, but let's say at least, you know, they're not gonna be upside down tomorrow on the house. Um, and the conversation never went to, we want to fire our agent and hire someone else because they have the relationship with the agent. So when you get rid of the relationship, then you, you guys are unable to, to win those sales. You guys are all going to win sales. You can all win enough sales just by working with people that you like and trust, that they like and trust you. And you can do that by texting people that you know, meeting them for so, what I call social engagement date. That's coffee date. You do that enough, you can make enough sales. What's your average price point in this office, Frank? 1.5. Okay, who knows how to multiply by two and a half? That's $37,500. That's right. So how many sales do you guys need at $37,500 average take-home pay to be happy? Seven. Seven, okay. How many people do you know? 50? No, you know more than 50 people. All you need to do is find one person every 60 days to hire you. That's the easy business, right? We're looking at this all backwards, trying to figure out how to, how to get these enormous numbers. Like, okay, can you find one person every other month to do that with? Part of how you're going to do that is by being in front of people. So well, how do I do that personally? I am, I'm at Century City Mall like every uh, three days a week, right? I got my parking spot there. I know it's restaurants. Everyone likes it. the easiest place for me to meet people, right? 
Um, I'm doing lunch with friends and or clients and, you know, and that's a mix, right? Pretty much every day. I'm doing something engaging with other people pretty much every day, right? So let's talk about from the beginning, how can we find people to put in the, into that pipeline? Everyone texted five people, right? Are you on Facebook, sir? Or are you just texting more than five? I'm having that conversation with a control right now. Okay, so good. I'm glad you made that mistake so we can all learn from you. So thank you. <laughs> What's the mistake that you're making right now? Uh, not paying attention to the <laughs> on, Listen, Frank told you at the beginning, there's nothing I'm going to tell you you haven't not heard before. What's the mistake you're making right now? I know instead of like making the appointment to talk in person, uh, doing the texting instead of connecting. Yes, correct. You want to take that text and convert it. So I'll give you a script. You guys can all write this down. You don't have to. I don't care. I'm out of here in 46 minutes. Doesn't matter to me. Sounds like you have a lot of questions about real estate. We should talk, right? Hey, I'd love to talk further. I've got a meeting now. We're going to meet for coffee tomorrow. I don't really care. You can go and play on the phone. Doesn't matter to me. It's relevant to me. But for your benefit, you want to convert that to a face-to-face. -face. People develop like and trust face-to-face, -face, right? People, I just sold a triplex for a guy who literally called and said he hated everyone he's ever worked with on my team. It's like his fourth or fifth deal. I really don't like this guy. And I'm just actively rude to him because I want him to not hire me anymore. <laughs> and he keeps coming back to me because he, for some reason, has this affinity for me. He called me. The first thing he says is, I don't want to work with any of the other people I've worked with before. I'm looking at this file. I'm like, okay, there's like three of my top agents have sold the property for you. Like, it's probably not them. It's probably you. That's the problem. And he worked with me every phone call. It's just him being difficult and me being, listen, you need to stop. I'm not doing this today. Or like, I'm not going to sit here and listen to this nonsense. This is what we're doing. And I guarantee you when he decides to buy or sell a property in six months, he's going to call me back because for some reason he has that personal relationship like and trust with me. Try not to be there. But the point being, if you build that relationship, you can do that with people. So how do we find people in our world? How many people do you guys know? How many people do you really know? You know, 50 people in the whole world. How long have you lived in, okay, in Los Angeles? How long have you lived in Los Angeles for? So you've met two and a half people per year. <laughs> I want to I want to encourage you to really think about the social groups that you're in, the things that you do, and looking at everyone that you meet as a potential source of business. That's a mistake that you're probably making because I'm guessing that you know more than 50 people. Well, Who does your hair? I'm sorry? Who does your hair? He went and bought through someone else. So. <laughs> Time for a new hairdresser. Were you pro Were you prospecting him? Yes, actually, I've been Good. Who does your nails? They buy a house? No. I'll give you a recommendation if you want. <laughs> Thank you. No, That's gonna be best. I want you guys to really look at like my, one of my first sales was my dentist son, right? Also, we never worked together again. That's another story. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. That involved a lot of screaming, more than I really would have put up with. I showed my mom's hair. I don't really have a hairdresser, you guys probably imagine, but I showed my mom's hairdresser property. They bought with someone else too, but it's okay. Like one of those like contractor investor types wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that. Um, everyone that you meet is a potential buyer or seller. Um, I, I kind of joke about it, but I want you guys to really understand that you shouldn't look at someone and say, oh, they just cut my hair. They just mow my lawn. You know, my gardener owns a, a home, right? Like, don't, don't assume that because you meet someone that they don't have the means to own a property. Um, they may not have the means to buy a property today. They may have bought a property in the past. Uh, my gardener probably has several hundred thousand dollars in equity in his residence. I, you know, I see an address, I just look, I just want to see what's going on, look it up, oh, I think it's like a duplex. I think he might actually own the house next door also, right? Um, one of the best sales I made was uh, my dad has one rental property, my grandma's old condo, and there's a tenant in there, and the tenant is like, it's, you know, there's no, no thought that the tenant would ever buy a property, inherits a property and calls me to sell it, right? I had to pay to put wood flooring in. As, a, as an inducement to get her to hire me. So I put wood flooring in the condo that I, one day I'll own half of. So it was okay, it's a pretty good deal for me. But I want you to cast a really wide net when you do this. Don't assume that anyone you meet is 
A, not going to hire you, or B, not capable of owning something or inheriting something, right? So if you guys are, how many people are here are new? Okay, so for you for you new people, got you, okay. I'm not taking attendance, don't worry. <laughs> if you're new in real estate, I want you to put everyone into your database. And if you're old in real estate, like some of you guys I know are old in real estate, I want you to go back and redo your database. This is the time, right? You guys know what's happening right now, right? You guys are on clear? Yeah. Okay, who was a broker in 2008? Okay. Is this good or bad what's happening right now? Better than 2008, much better than 2008. Well, from whose perspective? That was a trick question. I tricked you. From an agent. No, but for me, it was better. Yeah. 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 This thing that 2008. You guys, okay. So first of all, you guys are looking at like a moment in time. This is like one one day in time that this is a hard day. You know, in West LA in the Valley, there was like 51 new listings in the last 24 hours on the MLS tracker. That's that's not a lot, right? There's like probably 20,000 agents that cover those areas. Um, I want you to understand that this is not a, a fun time in the marketplace for the consumer, right? Especially the homeowner or the home seller. This is a fantastic time in the real estate market for the agent. Do you guys know why? Because we can reorganize and then can't, well, for me, it's just do whatever I could and do that. Yeah, everything's gonna change, right? Everything that six months ago is gonna change, right? The market is not underpriced the house, put six balloons on it, get nine offers and put on Facebook what a great agent you are, right? <laughs> That's gonna change. Agents are gonna go out of the business. Have you lost agents yet, Frank? I haven't. Okay. Are you are you sensing a churn? I'm not trying to put you on the no, spot. No, no, you're 100 percent correct. There's going to be because last time I think over 40 percent of the Asian population went away. Yeah. And I you know That's I right. know in Austin that we just talked on the growth call yesterday that 60 percent of Austin real estate agents did not sell a house last year. So that is probably going to be mirror our area in my opinion because we have way more agents than I think we should. Yeah. So I remember sitting in the old building in Oppenheimer at one of these meetings at Westside and Rob came in and said like some number of agents had quit. And I was like, this is great. Everyone's like looking terrified. This is fantastic news, guys. You guys know the best year ever to sell a home according to NAR. I'm, I'm sorry, to be a realtor selling a home according to NAR. Most sales per agent. You guys know the best year ever was for that? Yeah, there you go. Okay, you guessed all the possible uh, answers. <laughs> 2009 was the highest number of home sales per agent. You know the worst year for that? Yeah. Last year. Yeah. This year will probably be the worst year for that because now our sales are going to probably go down 20% from last year. We have more agents. The agents, I think, whenever the NAR dues are due, you'll get like a big drop. And, you know, you'll probably start seeing people dropping out, you know, when you send out your monthly invoices and, hey, you need to renew your MLS, you'll start seeing people drop out. This is great news for working agents, right? It's great news because the, the, the yield, the sales per agent will go up. It's going to go up because the sales will stay fairly flat. The number of agents will go down. That's great news for us. It's also great news because the nature of the business changed, right? People are going to be looking for more experience. They're going to be looking for more prospecting. You know, if I'm calling you, you're a potential buyer. I give up on you today. Let's say you're a regular, you're a regular person. It's a fair assessment. Okay. You're a regular person. You want to buy a house and rates just doubled. Can you buy a house anymore? Probably not. Right. So you're a regular person. Probably not. Now what happens in six months when prices drop 20%? Can you buy a house now? Maybe. 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 I can. But if I had a hundred of you, a hundred maybes is a fair number of yeses. Right. Right. So all these agents are, what's your name? Christian. Christian? Yes, All these agents are calling Christian three months ago. Hey, Christian, buy a house, buy a house, buy a house. What happened? Christian, I can't buy a house. Rates are 7%. What am I going to buy a house? Stop calling me. What happens? People stop calling you, right? You stop going on Redfin. You stop going on Zillow. Your Zillow agent's not seeing your activity. So people stop calling you, right? That's what's happening right now. That's why I have a prospecting day with my team tonight and tomorrow morning. What happens in three months when you're like looking at news? Like, holy crap, price is down 20%. I got to buy a house. Who are you going to call? Are you going to call uh, this guy who stopped calling you in August 2022? Or are you looking for a new agent? I didn't stop calling. You, said, you <laughs> would have stopped calling him. Yeah. Taking the next agent that calls. Right. 
and, and by the way, I think like 70 something, do you know the number? It's like 70% of people talk, hire the, their, their buyer's agent is the first agent they have a significant interaction with. Some, some, absurd, some absurd number. It's not the same for sellers, but for buyers. 2000, so you wake up in March, you're like, holy crap. I say that, holy crap, prices are down 20%. I got to buy a house. Your wife is like, Christian, we got to buy a house. These prices are too good. We got to buy a house. All of a sudden, you're a motivated home buyer, right? You have no agents in your life, right? Because maybe this guy's making you coffee, like he should be. But realistically, you have no agents. You're like, so when I say the market's going to change, is all, all of these guys here are free agents. No one's talking to them, and they're going to go hire the first agent they talk to. 2007, I sold 27 properties. Um, I'll give you, a, we're like on three tangents now. I apologize if you're oh, trying okay. to follow along. I'm sitting at a desk. Uh, funny story, I start off at a desk next to Alan Taylor. So, you know, you know the success rates of, of agents. Me and Alan get sat next to each other as rookie agents. Alan's a big agent in the Valley now. You know, all those other agents like quit real estate. You know, one of them called me after a 10 year break, wanted to come back into real estate. One of them hired me to sell a house. Anyways, me and Alan are next to Alan's like, hey, can you sell land? I'm like, yeah, of course I can sell land. I never, I didn't know what land was. I never sold land before. I grew up in Encino. There's no land. He's like, my buddy, a commercial agent, has a residential land, this lot to sell, referral, but he doesn't sell land. He just does whatever it is. Okay, I'll sell it. Like three months later, everyone's calling me to sell land. I'm selling like, you know, so like 9 million square feet of land in Lancaster in 2007. So when I say 27 deals, I really had like eight residential deals. I'm like probably 19. Anyways, 2008, I sold 51 homes, all to buyers, all to buyers I more or less met in 2008, prospecting for motivated investor buyers. You guys understand what I'm trying to say here? That was a little, I'm going to work on this for the next week when we do this again. Okay. <laughs> The point being, I went from selling like eight, nine, 10, 12 homes a year, which is not bad, right? And this is, year. yeah, this is like, this is like now my, this is 2007 is my third full year in the business. Maybe I sold like eight, nine, 10, 12 houses, like regular, you know, residential resale houses. 2008, I sell 51 houses, right? What's the difference? No, I, I met every single one of those people I met that year. I, I mean, maybe I met a couple people who were carrying over to it. They were, yeah, the, yeah, all that stuff. The world changed, right? Why don't you guys understand the world's going to change and you have an opportunity to grab market share. You have an opportunity that, you know, using our example of Christian here, everyone's given up on Christian because he's not buying a house today. But in six months, he's going to buy a house. Just, just for context, 2008, especially August of 2008, was probably one of the worst months in the history of real estate ever. You mean, uh, you mean seven, 2007? No, eight. It was, one, it was wonderful. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry, Four houses a month. That's the perspective. No, it, 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 he's talking about how amazing it is because the perception in the general populace was like, this is horrible. Nothing's selling. Nobody's doing anything. Blah, blah, blah. But he's giving you the other side of that, right? Right, right. The agent, yes. The consumer side, this is like a blood. I think that's when that would share some Lehman out of business. Yeah. Okay. That's what you're referencing, I yeah. think, or Bear Stearns, whatever. Uh, both of them, I think. Yeah. I didn't even, honestly, it didn't even register for me because I was selling so much. I was selling a property a week. Um, everyone I met knew. I would sell something. I'd deliver a great value. i get a referral. Everyone else had scattered from the business. It was spectacular. This is the opportunity you guys are walking into. The way that you're going to take advantage of this is by what we talked about at the beginning, prospecting, right? You guys have to go out there and get the idea of prospecting. So part of your job is going to be these coffee dates because this is the best way to stay in front of people. Let me tell you guys a secret. Um, I think Gary said this on the, he did a call yesterday uh, for Rick's office. Um, he said it before, you've heard it before. You're not going to have a good fourth quarter. You guys understand that? We're clear? That doesn't mean you're not going to sell anything. I want you to be realistic that you're not going to have a good fourth quarter. Is that fair? Sorry, Frank. <laughs> Don't, I, I have a lot of, the reason I'm telling you this, I have my agents who are like, why aren't I selling anything? You're, it's your fault, Richard. This is my, this is my guy. Ugh. 51 new homes came on the market yesterday. Right, it's not because it's too cold. Right, <laughs> fifty-one new homes came on the list. Two people got that joke. I'll uh, frankly email you later. That's what they always say. There's always some reason why. Oh, oh you guys on this. Fifty-one new homes came on the market. The market is very slow, very dead right now. You can still sell stuff, right? My team opened three or four escrows yesterday. It's fine. You can still sell something. You can still sell a home or two in quarter four. I want you guys thinking big picture that. At some point in the next six to nine months, there's going to be a huge land grab for business. And that will be determined by people who stay prospecting focused 
over that time. You can't just decide next March, oh, the market's hot. I'm going to go try to find a Christian, right? It's not going to work, right? You have to decide now, I'm going to prospect because when that market happens, I'm going to be ready to take advantage of it. I guarantee you, I started this thing called a foreclosure of, this, of the week email. Very complicated. I put an email. The title was foreclosures of the week. And then I put a, the best foreclosure of the week in the email. You guys got that? You good? Very simple. And I would email it to everyone I knew. And I would sell almost every single one of those. Now, we're not going to have foreclosures probably for a long time, if, if at all. But you're going to have opportunity. People are going to want to buy again. They're going to be very excited to buy. It's going to be an incredible time when people are like dying to buy homes again. And sellers are really motivated to move property. It's going to be a great time in the market. But we have to be prospecting centers. So let's talk about prospecting numbers real quick. How many prospecting attempts do we need to be making? I do like that answer, but I do like specific goals. Christian, how many did you do yesterday? I did uh, 20 yesterday. 20 actual contacts or how many attempts? Oh, uh, attempts, I don't know. Uh, contacts. 20 contacts? Okay. It's not good enough, but it's a nice try. Um, right now, so our, our normal standard, like the MAPS bold standard, would be 100 contacts a week. That's 20 a day, right? Um, I just went to the Zillow conference. By the way, it was wild. Um, highly recommend the Zillow conference. <laughs> 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 went to the Zillow conference, and uh, everyone's talking about the same thing. I, we had Jim Rifus, who's the MAPS coach, do. Um, uh, we have a mastermind group. Jim Rivas, can, everyone's talking about increasing activity by 30 to 50%. That's the theme of what I'm talking about. That's why I'm trying to get you guys comfortable with the idea that we're going to increase our activity. The results are not tomorrow. The results are in the next year. You guys will all have the, if you choose to, you'll have the best, the next 12 months will be the best 12 months of your business lives. It may be backloaded on the back six months. It's not going to be tomorrow, but it will be in the next 12 months is the most opportunity you'll ever see. The only reason I'm still in real estate is I wanted to be here for this moment again. Right, I did it once, it was a lot of fun. I'm gonna do it again, right? And I'm quitting real estate. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> so 100 is not good enough anymore. You've gotta be at 130 to 150 contacts per week, every week, valuable, good contacts with people. I don't care if you do it or not, don't do it, I don't care. This is the only way to success. There's no other way to success. Unless they don't have like a very wealthy family they come from with lots of real estate contacts in it. No, okay, then this is the way to success. Question. Yeah. Is this all random contacts, like cold calling, or is this? Look, it's better if it's people you know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about you. You know people in LA? A lot. Let's use you as an example, right? Okay. okay. How many people do you know in LA? A lot. Okay. Hundreds. Okay. Let's say that you, have, you know 300 people in LA. Is that fair? You have kids? Yes. Okay. My daughter's <laughs> Okay. How, by the way, first of all, uh, I made from each child, I made enough money selling homes at Isaiah to pay for Isaiah for that child and more. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. With Hannah, my middle daughter, I made I did eight million dollars on three transactions with one family, right? That's that's two kids through private preschool, right? And there's a lot of realtors at the school. Are you having coffee? Are you having lunch with all the other people in the class? Are you the room mom for your classes? Okay. This, and this is for you guys. If you're not, you don't have kids in school, what's the parallel in your life, right? Are you, the, you know, are you the room mom? Like I'm coaching two soccer teams. I tried to coach a third team. I couldn't get certified in time. That means like three times a week, 10 strangers, nine strangers getting an email for me with my signature line on the bottom, right? Someone will in there, I've already gotten people asking me questions, contact me back, right? Um, you know, how are you? In well, if I send an email to the soccer team and say, hey, reminder, practice is tomorrow. So, you know, Richard Shulman, real estate at the bottom, right? Okay. Now, if I'm sending like official, I don't do any school stuff, but maybe I would censor it a little bit. But, you know, sometimes I reply from my iPhone and it has that little, you know, <laughs> that brief tagline. Right. Sure. Sometimes you reply all to the, you know, to the bombs chain, right? And it says, realtor, here's my website, right? Here's my, you know, my information. Um, you guys should all have that type of thing going on. Who's in a rec sports league? <laughs> it's yes or no. Question. For the kids? No, well, for the well, I'm for the people without children here. <laughs> You're in a rec sports league. Yeah, I'm in a run club. I'm also sponsored. Okay. Um, are you? Do you? Do you network with those people? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was talking to um, professional the other day. 
trying to get some stuff going on. Just put yourself in front of people, be their friend, let them know what you do, and they will reach out to you when they need something. I've never once sold anyone anything. It's all, you know, the one with the example with Hannah I used, they came to me. They asked me for help. My first sale at my kid's preschool, they had hired a really big name agent and it wasn't working. And our kids were best friends, my older daughter. And they're like, they literally the conversation was, we didn't even know you were good at real estate until we saw your signature line because you came to school like in basketball shorts every day. I'm like, we well, yeah, like, I don't get dressed up to like walk my kids to school at eight in the morning. But they saw my signature line on one of like the group emails and clicked on the link and like, oh, Richard sells some real estate. They interviewed me and that was a million and two million. And I got a five million referral and a four million listing from family over time. So, you know, what's that like? 12 million right there. Um, and then other people, I've probably done, I don't know, 40 million easily from preschool. I don't do anything other than I'm involved there. I go to drop off, I go to pick up. I don't do any room mom or any room dad or stuff, anything like that. I just stay in front and center on people there. And when they're ready, they ask you for help. So with your run club, hey, you got, I don't know what run club people do, but run. <laughs> well, what do you do afterwards? Uh, we don't like sit in like a, they have like a coffee shop. They, they okay. Run just send out an email. Hey guys, who wants to meet up for coffee afterwards? Mm -hmm. Right? Just get your, get your email out there. You doing the Malibu half marathon? Yeah. No. I'm limping. Well, I don't today. run that much. I'm limping today from <laughs> training for that. <laughs> Water? I mean, what the sponsored water? I'm gonna need some legs. <laughs> you could do it. It's just mindset. Yeah. So when you say you don't sell something, when you are like with them, are you talking about real estate or is it just regular things? Regular things. I'm just making friends, right? I'm asking you what hey, tell me about run club. Hey, what did you do this week differently? Tell me about, you know, tell me what shoes are I just got into running a little bit. So I'm like what shoes are you doing? What are you doing for your, you know, hey, Mike, my ankles are really hurting. What are you doing to fix that? Build that friendship, build that relationship. They know you're in real estate. When they want to buy something, they're going to reach out to you, right? You don't need to ever ask, hey, you want to buy a house? I don't do that. But yeah, follow up with that. Like if, when you're cold calling with your friends and sphere of influence, are you also doing the same thing or are you are asking for referrals and business? I, th I think, well, so, okay. So that's probably a little bit more advanced uh, than what I, we really want to get into today. I think what I really want you to focus on for now is go meet people and go be friends with them. Here's the thing, right? When I, when we go to, what's your name? Vaughn. Vaughn? Okay, let's go with Vaughn. Okay. Vaughn, let's go meet for lunch, right? Right. Let's pretend you're like an accountant or something awful like that, right? Hey, Vaughn, how's work being an accountant? What's your answer? Pretend you're an accountant. Uh, Oh, it's very boring. Yeah, would you, is there anything you uh, want to talk about being an accountant? Is there anything you would possibly want to tell me? Uh, maybe about the uh, new roster in Lakers. Yeah, okay. Well, hold on, hold on. But I say, Vaughn, how's work? Right? Pretend, put yourself in the character, yeah. right? Yeah, it's not bad. I had a good conversation with my colleagues. Okay. And then what do you say back to me? What about you? How's your work? Okay. That's because you're a normal human, yes? Yeah, I, I want to assume, but okay, you're a normal human. I say, how's work? 90% of other people's jobs are not interesting and they don't want to talk about it. Frank, how's work? Fantastic. Yeah. Do you want to talk about recruiting agents to a non-real estate person? Sorry. No, of course not. Right? Sorry. You ask me how we're like, you would not believe it. That's my answer, right? You would not believe it. It's always the answer. Then I want you to have an anecdote ready to go. Fill in the blank, make up an anecdote, Use Christian's anecdote. I don't care. Have some, what's interesting happening in the market right now. If it was me, I'd say, Vaughn, you would not believe it. You know, six months ago, the market was on fire. Yesterday, I sold the house for 10% below what it would have sold for six months ago. And then you know what the best script is? You guys get a pen and paper out. We'll give you the best script ever for a salesperson. You guys ready? You can, just, you can type it on your phone too. It's fine. S-T-F-U. Who can Google it? The three people don't know what that means. Just wait and listen. I'll tell you after, and I can't say it. Just listen. You said you listen. That's your script. How's your job, Christian? How's your job? Fantastic. Yeah, you're a boring accountant. So you're not going to tell me anything about your job. Then what do you say? You would not believe it, Christian. Right now, it's like it is wild right now. I just sold a house yesterday for 10% below what it would have sold for last March. It's crazy out there. Pause. 
No, pretend, pretend, put yourself in character. What's your reaction to that? Well, what's the yeah, okay. What's the 10%? Okay, so we could have gotten 750 for it in March. We just sold it for 675. And honestly, I think we were lucky to get that. I represented the seller. We were lucky to get that. The market has just has changed a lot. <laughs> well, I rates have doubled. People are nervous about the marketplace. People are trying to get rid of their homes they want to sell. The opportunity market for buyers. I think that if you're looking to buy a home now and in the short term, there's going to be incredible opportunity out there. There's not a lot of buyers out there, not a lot of sellers, but the sellers are out there are discounting their properties. I'm getting sellers calling me every day, nervous about selling their home, and they don't know what to do. There's a great opportunity out there for buyers. Have you ever thought about buying a home? Okay. If I could find you a home for 10% less than it sold for in March, would you want to buy that home? Okay, you actually, you're actually, not, okay, so that was actually bad acting there. <laughs> so you were going to say, actually, no, because no one, no real people don't say that. I mean, when I'm on the couch, I'm assuming I make a <laughs> Yeah, but a real person would say, great, call me when it's 20%. All right, I'll do that. Yeah, or, or just, just tell you, uh, do you think it's better to wait another few months? Sure, I do. I do think it's better to wait. Why would you, you know, you can probably get a better deal in the future, right? But they say, oh, call me when it's 20%, and then what happens when it's 20%, you call them. What do they say? Call me when it's 30%. And then you get some people that are like, call me when it's 82%. And you're like, well, you missed it, guys. So when the, the other part of my story with Richard is that after he told me that, I actually went back to my one bedroom apartment with my three kids at nine o'clock at night. I was like, holy shit. And started actually calling people the way he told me to call people. And to make a, a long story short, um, just basically doing what he is suggesting here, I pulled myself out of six figures of debt in less than 12 months. And I turned everything around. And I ended up getting a celebrity investor client and sold like 12 houses in six months. And I realized that my biggest obstacle is me. And so one of the things that I teach them in this office, Richard, is the four script. It's like, when you call, call everybody in the middle and just don't talk to them about real estate, because that, that'll come, like exactly what you're saying. Talk, give them the four script, and then that that's actually gonna happen because we have people in here like, you know, amateur boxer, like assistant to the stars over here, Beverly Hills hairdresser. Like we have people here that have massive contacts that if they just employ this, like their business is gonna go through the roof. This is, this is all we do. 215 sales is your everything we do. Just call people and talk to them. Um, you guys know what the Ford script is, by the way? Family, occupation, recreation, dreams, right? Know your local sports team. They're going to want to talk about the Lakers, right? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, they won. That's so exciting. They beat the Broncos. It's not a very good team. <laughs> um, but you want, to, you want to be able to, right, right. make friends. The real estate will always come up. Look, I I call this like fishing, right? So I just threw you a little, I don't know, I've never actually really fished before, but what I imagine from seeing fishing on TV, I, I like threw a, a, a little line your way, right? Man, I just sold the house for 10% off and you bit, right? Hook, line, and sinker, as they say, right? I'm really you in now, right? Oh, can I buy a house now? Yeah, all right. Um, but I, some of it I said, and people are like, okay, cool. All right, fine, we'll continue our conversation. Remember that your situation might change tomorrow, right? A funny story I like to mention is I had a new agent on the team, new agent, we have them call like the old lead pile, kind of like practice. You get some deals here and there. Calls this woman's been our database for years, like nine different, you know, we have all the logs, right? Nine different agents had called her and never bought anything, never toured anything. And then the most amazing thing happened. What's the most amazing thing? Yeah. What's that? Oh, even better than that. The most amazing thing, sudden pregnancy, wealthy parents. Within like 15 days of just a random call, in escrow, $2 million cash deal. So that woman, had we called her, I don't know, two months before, is probably like, I'm not buying a house, right? Today, you're like, I'm not buying a house. Things change. People's life circumstance change. The woman I mentioned earlier, she inherited a condo. You know, she was probably on planning on inheriting that condo at some point, but you never know when that day is going to be, right? A lot of our business is going to be predicated on family circumstances, right? So you have to be understanding that when I call you today and you're like, "I'm never buying a house," that changes tomorrow. You get married, right? You get pregnant. You get someone pregnant, right? 
you get inherited property, you make a lot of money, right? You lose a lot of money, you get divorced. All these things happen to people and we're not rooting for it, right? There's a lot of bad things that happen, but like, look, a lot of my business is grandma and grandpa died and we need to sell a house. Okay, that's just part of the business, right? So I can, I can never say like, oh, I talked to Christian, he's never gonna buy a house. I'm not gonna call him again. Who knows what's gonna happen, right? You can make a lot of money, you get married, inherit something, we don't, we, we don't know. So I gotta stand in front of him, lifetime, right? Because at some point you're gonna buy a home, you're gonna sell a home, right? Okay, I just need to be there. If I'm there day in, day out, he's gonna call me when he's ready to buy. So um, that's like kind of like the main stuff that I wanted to cover with you guys. I think I made the point earlier, just wanna like underline that this is a big shift that's going to happen in the marketplace. It's a big shift in assets for people who own real estate, right? If you own real estate or want to own real estate, this is going to be a big moment for you in the next 12 months. If you want to be a successful real estate agent, which I presume that's some of you, right? This will be, this will be a career defining year for everyone in this room, right? Like my career changed in 2008 when I sold 51 homes. Um, all, I think all buyers, no database, no CRM, no script training, They're just prospecting through people. Do you know what happens? You sell 58 people a home that they now own or rent out. They live in a rent out, no sale, all buyers. What happens over the next uh, 14 years? They become sellers. They become sellers. I've resold last year. I, I had, I, last year I went three for four on listing appointments from those people from 2008. This year, I have a current escrow from one of those people, at least one this year. I've probably resold 20 or 30 of those properties. So I got 50 sales and I got another 30 sales out of that, plus all the referrals and the leads from the open houses and all that stuff. This is a big moment for all of you. Now, you're going to hopefully make some more money. What are you going to do with that money when you make this money next year? There we go. Okay. So what happens if you buy a real estate low? This is generally a good thing or a bad thing? Awesome. Okay. So this is a big, when it hits a big opportunity for everyone, this is the moment I've been waiting for, right? This moment you guys have been waiting for as well, that uh, when you have this opportunity that um, uh, you, you might make an enormous amount of money in the next couple of years, you can invest that in real estate. All the, all the sales I have, all the blah, 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 who cares? The vast majority of the money I've ever made has been for owning and investing in real estate, right? The, the commissions pay for that, but the, the real money you make is not... Listen, you're never, no, no one is ever going to make enough money. They're going to retire just from selling homes, right? You're going to make money from selling homes and investing that money. That's all going to happen in the next two, three years for everyone here. So every call you make is worth twice as much as it was six months ago. So that's all I have, Frank. 54 minutes, best I can do. Let me let me be clear. The market is no 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 no. The, the market is shifting downwards. So where do you see it in six months? Well, I have no idea. I can tell you what happened last time. July two thousand seven was roughly the peak of the market. I bought a condo in April two thousand eight, and that condo did not drop more than five or seven percent in value at any point in time. That's nine months, or less, really less than nine months, but seven eight months. I mean, this is not. Look, look, I don't know, draw. I don't know. look, real estate goes up like this. It goes down like this. Real estate does not go down like this. Because right now, everyone is sitting here thinking, I'm going to wait. That's going to create a vacuum. We're in the middle of a vacuum. This month, you look back in six months, this will be the big month, I think, the next 45 days. We're in a vacuum right now. No one wants to buy. A lot of people are nervous about selling. And one day in your neighborhood, someone's going to sell a home. And set a new low price, and people are going to flip out and flood the market with homes. It's it's going to happen. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. It's going to, and then that's going to cause. I'm talking to so many sellers right now that are in La La Land. I'm I have a one eight listing right now or one seven listing. I literally am like turning her down because I don't want to list it at the price she wants to list it. So in my own apartment building. Yeah. One nine almost. Yeah. Now they're bringing the fifteen hundred square feet to unit mm -hmm. for one nine nine. Doesn't mean it's gonna sell. It doesn't make it. the larger unit sold for cheaper. So still like I think the agent is not a land. Every all the sellers I'm talking to are like, I know the market's changed. Okay, cool. I want March two March twenty two pricing. Like, 
Okay, well, it's not March. Well, I don't care. My my house is great. Your house is the most amazing house I've ever seen. Wow. And interest rates have doubled. I have a, I bought an investment property in in February, March at 2375 interest rate. Now that rate would be 475. Is that price the same? I'm sorry, it's a 275 rate. I did my house at 2375. Now that's 475. Am I am I still paying the same price? No, my financing's doubled. No one out there, they're like, oh, oh all the cash buyers. I'm like, you, you guys, who here knows rich people? Are any, any of your rich friends desperate to buy a house today? Of course not. Everyone I know is like bragging how much money they're saving, waiting for like the opportunity. You know, I call my accountant and I'm like, what are your rich clients doing? I call my, my business, like my, yeah, I call my the guy who has my retirement. I said, what are all your rich clients doing? About saving money, refinancing out, selling off bad assets, waiting, waiting for the opportunity market. So from 2007, when you started calling all the people, you know, calling people and talking to people and developing those relationships, mm -hmm. it's safe to say that that's just the consistency of what your business has been. And it's just, you know, quadratically grown over a period of time to where you're at today. You know, I have this, I like, I just have this thought, Frank, that if I meet you in an open house and I give you my time, I just feel like I've, I, I, you owe me an answer, right? Does that make sense? I think a lot of people like get a lead and they call it twice. I talked to my agents like, I've called, I've called this lead for two weeks and I gave up. And I'm like, I'm like, one time I called this little lead for 18 months. He never responded except like a couple random texts or emails. And one day he's like, I want to see these three homes. And he bought one of them and I never heard from him again. And then he sent me a referral for his brother or something. And I sold that guy a house too. Never heard from the guy again. You know, I have a, a woman uh, in Santa Monica. I've sold like three properties for will not answer the phone, will not respond to emails. Whenever she needs to do something, she, hey, we want to sell our house. Come over. I'm like, okay. Like, if I spend my time, like I take my time away from my kids to talk to you, you owe me something, right? Just tell me yes or no. But I'm going to call you until I get a response from you. So, you know, every day, day in, day out, you've got to call people. The moment you don't call someone is the moment that they're going to, you know, that, you know, Listen, someone dies and you inherit a house and you're in a moment of weakness. Maybe you're not thinking about Christian, the guy who called you once two months ago. How many people in your personal business? Mine, like a hundred. I don't like to talk to anyone anymore. <laughs> How many were there? I've got 75,000 names in our team database. Uh -huh. But what's the standard you hold these things to take calls every day? Um, I don't, well, we don't hold anyone to standard, Frank. That's a violation of California labor law. So I appreciate you asking me that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I tell people the same thing that we were on 100 contacts. You know, if you want to hit your goals, 100 contacts. If you want to come to me and say, Richard, you're, uh, my job is to provide opportunity for my team members, right? If you want to come to me and say, you're not providing an opportunity, great. Show me who you called this week. Did you call 100 people this week? No. Okay. We don't have anything to talk about. Go call 100 people next week and then we can talk. And then what do they do? They call 100 people and they got appointments. They don't bother me again, right? It was the same thing. We used to do these meetings. We'd say, what are the challenges you're having? And everyone would go, here, oh, I got a challenge. It's okay. What's your challenge? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Tell me about the buyer meeting first. Oh, we didn't do a buyer meeting. Okay. Conversation's over. After three months of that, people started doing their buyer meetings. So 100 contacts, my really good agents, my experienced agents with really mature databases are not doing 100 contacts. They're probably doing 60 to 80, I would guess. But they've got 100, 200, 300 past sales to work off. You know, I, I call a hundred people. That's my database that I work. I can get, I've done uh, myself 35 million this year off of that database. So, you know, but if you're new, you have an immature database. That is, you don't have a lot of relationship or past experience with them. hundred contacts a week. Now it's 130. So. Questions? More questions? The camera's not tracking me, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> You're like right up on it. You can see it. There you go. Watch that movie. Get off screen. Awesome. I'm not buying. So the one thing I talk about in my office a lot is, is is volume times time equals result. And if you don't put a lot of volume in, meaning contact and talk to a lot of people, that time to get the closing and sale is going to be elongated if you shorten that by increasing the amount of volume. Somebody right now that's getting into the market that say hasn't sold a house a month, which I think should be fairly easy to do, is 
with, should it be focusing on buyers or sellers or just increasing the volume of the people that they're meeting on a daily basis? Listen, I, I don't want to discourage anyone by saying this. I don't want people to be realistic that they need to have a longer view on their conversion, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like this is a slow time in the market, okay? You're not going to sell a lot of homes in the next three months, most likely. Not to mean you won't sell any, just temper your expectations. The more people you talk to, the better. People say, I, I, I interview new agents. Like, I want to do sellers. Like, okay, how are you going to do sellers? I don't know. Tell me. I, how do I do sellers? I sold a lot of people homes and uh, they were buyers. Now they're sellers. It's a good way to do it. You're not going to just like press a button and only work with sellers, right? Like you have to start somewhere. Just talk to as many people as possible. More likely they'll be buyers because with the nature of how people hire their buyer's agent, people hire their buyer's agent by the first person they talk to, right? People hire their seller's agent, 50% friend, 50% top agent in the area. Okay, right? Buyers, much easier place to be. By the way, buyers are probably easier to sell right now anyway. So I wouldn't even, like, I have, I have sellers I'm turning away or, you know, discouraging from working with me at this point. So you're <laughs> no, 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 I'm just like, I'm just like putting on the back burner until they, uh, you know. Good try. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's what the business is Yeah, I'm, I might just start saying a much higher commission than long I'm listening to but. Does that answer your question? Sort yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't worry too much about it, except the only thing I'd worry about is committing to myself a volume of contacts every week, week in, week out. And when you start missing those weeks, that's when you have trouble. Right? And people are going to give up on the business. Great. It's great news for all of us. You bored? Thank you. I can leave. No, I know Richard's got, Richard's got things to do. So a lot of houses to sell. So, any last questions before we wrap this up? Don't want to have five minutes with Richard alone. Oh, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat. There's like 11 things in there. I'm sorry, but maybe somebody oh, has a question. Oh, I'm seeing devil. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, somebody, yeah, somebody saying, telling Richard how radio. Oh, it's Joan. Hi, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> no, oh, no question. Yes. So, social event, having husband tells me, all right, so business now let's talk about deals any, any deals you got pass why pass why? get their email address put them on your investor database so i have all all those people are tabbed investor in my database if i have a deal i'll send it out but you're not going to make anybody working that client as a client because they're calling me too right like give me their name i'll bet you I, they're in my database like i'll bet you 20 dollars i have their name in my database like Right, yeah, I bet I have them all. Like I've talked to all of them. So, one time in this office, I had so one of those. Don't make that call the next day or that weekend. Be like, so tell me exactly what you're looking for. No, because like if you have a deal. if you have a deal which doesn't really exist, right? Like it's kind of this fake thing. Like you just email it to all your clients to have a deal. You have a deal, call me. I'll buy it. Right? You can represent me. You can double end it. I'll buy it. Don't worry about that. Cause that guy will drive you crazy. He's gonna retrade you in escrow. He's gonna make your life miserable. Right. So, what kind of a deal are you looking for? Me, I want to buy a house for like forty percent off right now. And people call me every day with their properties, like, "Oh, I got a four point five cap." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like, cost of funds is higher than that." I'm like, right. losing money on this property. No, I'm kidding. I call. I, I call deals all the time. I'm like, "Hey, I got this." Yeah. He's, he's straight up honest with you. I drove. I drove to Bakersfield to buy a burned out condo. Uh, I, is there a class you could teach on how to look for that? No, 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 no. The class is the class is no. That's not the business. The business is like, go, go meet some, go meet this guy and his wife and make friends with them and find them a house. They will hire you even if you're not the best agent, right? That's the whole point of what I'm saying, right? You'll hire her because you're friends, right? Yeah, you could hire me. I'm a better agent than you, right? No offense. No. Fair. I sold a lot of houses. Frank told you that. You should want to hire. Everyone should want to hire me, right? surprisingly i don't sell all the homes in los angeles inexplicably because people hire their friends they hire people they're close with i get all my agents like oh the listing agent's so stupid i'm like yeah they beat you for that listing because you're not prospecting i had a conversation with a she left my team after that she was very upset with me i said you failed by not getting she's like oh the listing agent screwed up the deal you failed by not prospecting to get that listing and this moron got it instead of you Find this nice guy, his wife, 
wife's pregnant, they got to buy a house. You guys went to high school together, your friends. That's the business, right? This this nonsense with the deal, walk away. You'll never you'll never get paid on it unless you have a great deal. If you have a great deal, you're getting paid anyways. So whether or not you know that guy, it doesn't matter. I do. That's a very personal question. Um, I don't know, maybe uh, it depends how you really categorize online, but let's say 40%, maybe. Yeah. Oh my God, Joe. Uh, oh. <laughs> Someone's got to reply to that one. Um, let's, let's type that in. Uh, all right. So, did anyone get an appointment from the texting? Oh, imagine that. How many appointments do you get? Two, they only could text three people. Then the third person is actually Cassie, but she called me instantly and she said, I moved to Oregon. Okay, I know realtor in Oregon. Where in Oregon? She's in Parkland, but she used to be a realtor and now she's looking for a job up there too with Keller Williams as like an office manager. Okay, well, you can connect her with a real, uh, an office in, uh, in Oregon. I you got an appointment? I know you were texting them. Okay. Not that <laughs> You got an appointment? All right, do this every day, guys. It's not hard. It's easy business. All right, go work. Bye.